Hello and welcome, friends. Welcome to another series episode. And today it is the first episode of a series that I called Epic Battles. Epic Battles between rival fountain pens that were manufactured in the same period and in a way they were direct competitors. And what a great first episode will be to start with two iconic fountain pens, piston fillers from uh, Germany in the early 1950s. Both of them are celluloid made fountain pens and uh, they are rare, rare and beautiful, beautiful fountain pens, the pride of every collection. And I must tell you, that I'm one of the collectors that have those two iconic pieces. And of course, I will share it with you because what is collected without sharing with your best friends. Let me start by uh, presenting to you uh, this Mont Blanc fountain pen from the early 1950s. Okay, let me tell you guys, how do I know it's from the early 1950s? The first clue, it is this logo of Mont Blanc. I don't know if you can see in this lighting, but it developed a quite ivory patina because this material is uh, called casein and in time it uh, develops this gorgeous, gorgeous patina. So this is one clue and you can encounter this yellow patina only on the early 1950s models. Another clue is the interesting imprints on the turning knob. This is a factory imprint O point K point. I don't know what it stands for, but the F I know it is the size of the nib and 146 is the name of the model. It was made from this gorgeous, gorgeous shining celluloid, the black celluloid. You must know that in Germany of the 1950s, the most sold fountain pens demanded by the public were the Schwarz simple black fountain pens with gold trims. This is not uh, just a simple 146, it is a masterpiece. You can see that we don't have Meisterstück. So masterpiece means it was meant for the export market for the English speaking countries. The cap unscrews and we can see it's beautiful, beautiful two-toned 14 karat gold nib. And another clue that this is from the 1950s, it is this key slope type feed. This slim, slim feed that highlights the nib. This is present only on the early 1950s models. It is here an ink window, but unfortunately it isn't clean, so it's covered with ink. This is the turning knob. And we can see we have a metallic filling uh, mechanism. By the way, this is equipped with the only filling system patented by Mont Blanc, the famous telescopic filling mechanism. This was used only in the 1950s and it was discontinued in 1959. Piston filling mechanism. Some collectors consider this the best ever produced by Mont Blanc. Guys, this is the Mont Blanc. And now I will present you a fountain pen that was directly designed to compete with the, the Mont Blanc. It comes from Germany Bonn and the name is Schoneken 111 Extra. Extra was the largest size of this fountain pen because it was available also in a lady size, the smallest one, and um, in a middle size called, I believe, superior or um, uh, something like that. You can't correct me in the comments if I uh, was mistaken. You can see the difference. First of all, the material celluloid. It is a bold, bold choice by uh, Schoneken. 
because the German market demanded quite simple black looking fountain pens. Maybe they had in mind also to export this model to other countries where indeed the celluloid, colorful celluloid was quite appreciated. Two rings on the cap. The highlight of this fountain pen is the design of the clip. So let me show you in comparison the simple classic design of the Mont Blanc. Right here we have um, what quite appears a simple looking clip, but it has no more than seven, seven faces and it's quite, quite, quite uh, well designed. At the top of the cap, we can see the rounded torpedo shape of the Mont Blanc and Patinat logo. This has a simple, simple metallic ending. The turning knob is quite uh, similar in the sense that it is rounded like a dome on both of the fountain pens. And the cap on screws, the same as the Mont Blanc cap. Now we can appreciate the uh, golden nibs. So if we had here an F nib, the size of the nib from the Shonaken is uh, engraved on the back of the feed. Let me show you. And I hope you can. Sorry, guys. In this lighting, it is quite difficult to show you. So this is a double uh, BBS nib. Oblique double broad nib. You can see the similarities between the gripping section. This is wider and this is narrower, but they end similar in that concave form. Although this hasn't a proper ink window, the um, celluloid is quite transparent and you can see the level of the ink. Here, the 146 is equipped with a better ink window, but um, now you can't see it because it is covered with ink. So the same dimensions, maybe with the cap of uh, the Shonaken is a little bit uh, longer, as you can probably see. Quite, quite interesting, interesting fountain pens. But now it is the time to do the writing samples and to see how they perform. Also, this has a famous filling mechanism, the so-called piston filler with a click mechanism. Actually, that click is, it was designed like a safety measure uh, because uh, some um, turning knobs tended to move in the pocket and there was certainly a danger of filling the ink on your cloth. So, what uh, battle it will be without a writing comparison, but till we do the writing comparison, let me show you, let me compare those iconic fountain pens from the 1950s with uh, some familiar fountain pens that you might have in your collection. So I will start with the Pelican Souverain M800, the Souverain um, which was launched in 1987. It um, maintained its dimensions, so it is quite, quite a uh, nice way to to see the dimensions and of course i have a popular popular fountain pen a lovely lovely fountain pen the lamy 2000 so guys you can see them side by side and you can notice that the 1950s models are smaller than um, the 1967 model and the 1987 model. And uh, you can see by uh, the, the dimensions that they really competed with each other. Uh, it they were designed to look similar, to feel similar. And of course, both of the products, producers invested a lot of know-how and technology in producing their gorgeous, gorgeous nibs. Not only the nibs, but also the filling mechanisms are quite unique. Those were produced in a time where quality was the first rule in designing the fountain pen. The other fountain pens were made in a 
time where also the accountants had a way with the design of the fountain pens. So if there were cost efficient, they were okay. If they were expensive, like the telescopic filling mechanism of, of the Mont Blanc, we ditch it away for a simple, simple piston filler, like unfortunately Mont Blanc did in 1959. It is the same, speaking of um, reducing the costs, that the Schoenecken ended its activity in 1967 after the big, big blow uh, from the revolution of the ballpoint pen that swept all the fountain pen industry. And I often compare this blow with the blow given by the quartz movement to the mechanical watch industry in Europe. It is the same effect. So you either adapt or die. It was quite a war, quite a revolution that swept off the world of fountain pens. But uh, enough with the sad talk. Let's uh, return to our fountain pens. Well, I can tell you that they are both now at a reasonable price. Uh, this is around 1,500 uh, 1, euros. And uh, the other one, roughly 1,000 uh, euros. But because it has this uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, double broad oblique nib, I think that they are quite similar in prices in uh, today's market. Of course, when they were new, uh, this one wasn't um, uh, a cheap fountain pen. This cost 90 Deutschmarks, so not, not quite uh, a cheap fountain pen. And uh, I'm not so sure about the original price of the Schoenecken 111 Extra, but um, I think that it was priced similar to this model, maybe even more cheaper to directly compete with with uh, the Mont Blanc model. So, for the writing sample, I have a Faber Castle uh, turquoise ink, but you can see I have written here dark ink. This is why, uh, because I purposely contaminated the beautiful, beautiful light turquoise with a few drops of um, Parker Quick ink, and you can see it has. Um, nice nice dark color but uh, we will appreciate that when we will do the writing samples so for the writing samples remember guys i will dip both of the fountain pens this isn't a fair comparison this is a remember this is an f nib and this is a double broad oblique nib so they will write quite quite uh, different but uh, we will uh, see about that I will leave the angle of the camera like it is. Maybe I will give it a little zoom. So I will start with uh, the Mont Blanc and after that we will pass to the Schoenecken. Let me open the ink bottle. So guys, I will simply dip it in ink. You know that I don't like to post my fountain pens. By the way, they both can be posted so not a problem there. I don't have a tissue available, but not a problem. Okay, let me give it a little bit of zoom. And I have here the Mont Blanc. Blanc. Masterpiece. 146. From 1952. With a beautiful 14 carat. 585 F gold nib. Okay. Okay, guys. Let me do some line variations to see if we have no, no flex. Let me see how uh, juicy this nib is. Whoa, quite a nice uh, juicy nib. Okay, let me test the reverse writing. Reverse writing. No, it was simply not designed for this type of writing. It even scratches a bit, so no way. <laughs> okay, 
let me see the signature review quite quite nice and let me also do the pressure test right here so here no pressure and here we have a pressure so definitely a line variance it is uh, noticed okay now the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so quite 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 a uh, nice uh, writer i am uh, impressed with uh, this nib it simply glides on the paper and um, maybe you've uh, heard the nice uh, music that uh, it does when you write with it this guys is the Mont Blanc masterpiece 146 celluloid from the early 1950s with a telescopic filling mechanism unfortunately it uh, doesn't work but it will be soon serviced and I will leave this here on this side and now we will do the same procedure with our Schoneken again a celluloid model from germany early 1950s also equipped with an interesting piston filling mechanism the so-called click piston filling mechanism so again with this um, ink i will simply <laughs> wipe it out with my finger oops Oops, 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 oops. Uh, okay it is what it is now i'm ready let me put this aside and i hope you can see them um, both so this is a shown again one 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 extra also from 1952 i believe a 14 carat 585 oblique double broad nib a gold nib okay some line variations no flex some reverse writing reverse writing and this one performs quite quite uh, well not suitable of course for reverse writing as you can see in uh, no reverse writing let me do the pressure test so here no pressure and here a little bit of pressure yes it has some line variation but not as good as the mont blanc okay for a signature review it's wonderful for a signature okay don't forget the juicy test yes quite a nice juicy nib also this one and now let me write the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so it's definitely is another nib what a difference um, a double oblique um, uh, nib from an F nib quite 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 a nice nice fountain pen my opinion is I love this oblique nib but um, sincerely if they both the both fountain pen costed the same uh, money and uh, this is a tough one okay uh, if you look at them, I will bet my money on Shoneken, but the true market of the 1950s decided that Mont Blanc is a better, better product. This was a commercial fail. And um, it is strange because this is a beauty. I don't know in our days who would want the battle. Of course, we have the prestige of the Mont Blanc brand, but you must remember that in the 1950s, the Mont Blanc 
was uh, known for um, the quality of its products but uh, uh, they didn't have um, that uh, branding associated with uh, the product that of course boost the price of the fountain pen but remember in the 1950s this cost 90 Deutsche Mark so almost 100 Deutsche Mark that were money at that time although this was 90 I believe this was at the same price because believe me guys if this was 70 or 80 Deutsche Mark I will go in a heartbeat for this one but um, again the market is a strange strange place and uh, in the 1950s in the early 1950s when uh, quality was the first cr criteria of designing a fountain pen guys uh, this was my uh, battle between two iconic classic fountain pens quite quite expensive fountain pens celluloid fountain pens german fountain pens piston filling mechanism fountain pens from the early 1950s first of all i want to wish you to have a nice day wherever you are have a nice day i uh, thank you for your time if you've enjoyed this battle between uh, two iconic fountain pens please uh, subscribe to my channel i will see you at the next episode till then with this beautiful beautiful classic fountain pens we will see you at the next episode till then bye bye